Good morning and welcome to Ensemble Conversations with me, Mark Kilmurray, Artistic Director at the Ensemble Theatre. This morning, I'm very pleased to talk to my good friend and wonderful actor and ensemble regular, Daniel Mitchell. Danny, how are you? Yeah, good. To, you did that intro so well. I thought you were actually a recording, Thank and I you. thought, how are we? But that, that's you're live. That's fantastic. Great. I'm not live. Uh, Apparently, uh, I am too. Sort of. You are. You're not. Just you're not um, <laughs> yeah. uh, computer graphic. It's right. Yeah, yeah. How is well? Question before we begin. I just wanted to know how how lo lockdown is treating you this time round. Look, it's 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 pretty good. Um, you know, I've got a lovely house here. I've got a I've got a, a, a lovely friend who I can go and visit, and um, uh, and and I like food, and I like drink, and I like watching TV. Although I've got to say, like most people, I'm getting kind of a bit over <laughs> sitting in front of the TV. And when someone says, "What have you watched recently?" you go, um, "Because your head's yeah. full of too much." Um, but apart Binge. from that, no, it's good. It's good. I've been working on a few projects as as we all do, digging up projects from years ago, going, why didn't I finish that? I could finish that now. And um, yeah, so that's kind of keeping me busy. And uh, and I'm just loving being in Blackheath. And we had snow yesterday, which you probably saw. Uh, I don't know if they made a thing on, on the news item, as a news item, but uh, we had a real good snow flurry and they were across the road in the park. Fabulous. There were snowmen and kids on sledges. And it was beautiful. Yeah. Wonderful. I love snow. I think that's what lockdown has done, even though, you know, it's a terrible, terrible thing. There is a little bit of a silver lining on the cloud when you can take a breath and look at those old projects and get busy doing stuff. I know I've been doing a lot of drawing that I like yeah, to do wow, and uh, writing, you know. Yeah, there's a good thing. Yeah. I think it's good to do some of that. It is um, good. And you can actually do it and, and then give it up for a week and then come back to it again. And you're still in lockdown. It's still there. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, Danny, I'm just interested in uh, going back to your career a little bit, because obviously the yes. son of a very famous father, Warren Mitchell. I mean, I was yeah. thrilled when I met Warren and also thrilled to work with him uh, briefly. Mm. A great character actor from British TV with uh, lots of series and, of course, Till Death Has Depart mm. mm. made him very famous. When you started out as an actor, did you find this an obstacle or was it helpful to you in a way? I think I have described admitting that I wanted to get into acting because I, as, a, as a, a kid at school, I had avoided it like the plague. Um, it was like mm. everyone was saying, you're going to follow your father's footsteps. And that was absolutely not what I was going to do until there was nothing else to do. And it was, I described it like a kind of a vortex, a familial, you know, vortex when I suddenly went, oh, I wouldn't mind going to drama school. And everyone was going, hey, wow, fantastic, fantastic. Dan's going to drama school. Uh, but there was the there was the comment that will come from outsiders following your father's footsteps then, are we? Mm -mm. Which was a bit mm. intimidating to hear. Um, so I tried to avoid following footsteps, apart from the fact that, well, many sons and or daughters go into the same business as their parents and people don't make a thing of it. But because you're you're in the public eye, it, it, a thing is made of it. And um, I was glad that the first couple of jobs I had had nothing to do with him at all. Uh, although over the, as the years went by, I, I, I love the fact that we did get to work together, especially here at the Ensemble. It, and mm. so acting was in your blood, even though you tried to fight it. What was what's the spark? That made you go actually i am going to drama school oh it's really weird look i think it came out of uh, a lot of teenage confusion of not knowing where i was what i was doing there is one particular moment which uh again i think perhaps this has just come to me in lockdown thinking back looking over uh, at past and how and why things happened and um, uh, and I got an extraordinary job. I probably told you about this story of uh, having a job on a boat when I was 17, where I found mm. myself in the most extraordinary situation where the owner of the boat had died. Uh, it, it, this was in Portugal. Uh, and I was a 17 year old and we had the FBI. We had the Portuguese police. This was Portimao near where that poor little girl disappeared. Um, and right. we were stuck in this boatyard for six weeks. And I began to see everything as a kind of film scenario or a book or, or a play or something. Uh, and I think that's when it struck me as I'm, I'm living in the middle of a drama. Mm. I, I could actually see myself doing this for a living, except I'm going to have <laughs> to deal with all the shit of um, people saying I've followed your father's footsteps. Well, look, I, I might not have got into drama school. I might have changed my mind, but, I went, my mind, but I went for it. I went for it. I did. Yes. Mm. And when you started out on your career, you say you sort of did it on your own. I know you told me, which is one of my favourite stories, that you played a dead body on stage one of your first 
<laughs> when you were first gigs. Yes, but I wasn't allowed to call it that. It, it was fairly no. early on, and it was after when I'd been here, and uh, that was it's funny. I didn't think about that one. Yes, that 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 was uh, <laughs> a, a, a strange auditioning for the dead body because I went up to meet the director <laughs> in a hotel um, uh, in Sydney because the play was. Uh, going, it was. I was an actor who had a, a British equity and Australian, so they wanted someone who could go back, understudy Ronnie Corbett, so starring yes. uh, Ronnie Corbett and Donald Sindon. Um, and I thought, how am I going to audition for this? Go and sit there and close my eyes. But he said, no, 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 no. It's not. It's not really a dead body. But 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 I tell you, if I do, if you do get this part, I'm thinking, how am I doing so far? If you do get this part, you cannot tell anyone at any time ever that you are anything right. other than a dead body because it will give the game away. So we have to have that in the contract in writing that you are just the dead body. So sure enough, yeah. I, my friends loved it when I went back and said, yeah, I auditioned for the dead body, I've got the part. Um, <laughs> and, and the upshot was that I was really careful about it. But when we came uh, to Australia, we were doing some publicity, they had uh, Donaldson and Ronnie Corbett and me half in the background standing up. I could have been picking my nose, but I was standing up and mm. I said, no, 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 I shouldn't. I can't be in this. They said, no, 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 please. We want the three of you there. I go, I'm meant to be a dead. No, it's all right. Don't worry about it. And of course, the, the post came up. They couldn't use it because the dead body's standing up going, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. But uh, so the twist was you weren't a dead body. That was the twist. No, no, he, he comes right. alive um, in, in the second half, comes out of the cupboard, having woken up, having been drugged or whatever. Uh, I see. Right. So if you did corpse, it's OK because you were you were alive all the time. Oh, and believe me, that uh, Sir Donald was quite a cheeky actor. He would open the cupboard door and he would tickle yeah. me sometimes just to make sure I was oh, being no. a proper method actor yeah. and wouldn't, wouldn't come out. <laughs> Dead. Once I and also, he did um, and, uh, and, and he would open the cupboard door and go. Pss, 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 pss. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's Great, not Donald. fair, is it? Especially on stage. Also, uh, Danny, I think it was. I think it was. Um, uh, either Ronnie Corbett, or, uh, you said that did the, the uh, or Donald Sindon, the clap when you exit and when you come on, you do a couple of claps. I was going to talk about that, that as, house uh, as uh, in another play in Barefoot the Park with Jamie Oxenbold because I told him that story yes. and he didn't yes. believe it. And I said, You try it. I said, Donald Sindon and it said, so the thing you can do is you come on stage, you know, being famous, obviously, they, they quite often would applaud anyway. But just in case he thought it was a, a quiet audience, he would come on stage and it would go yeah. like that as he got into it. And it would get the audience going clapping. And uh, anyway, I, I, I said to Jamie, I said, you've got the lo lovely role of the... Um, is it the furniture removal list in Barefoot Park? Telephone, the telephone. Tele telephone, yeah. Man, that's, yeah, telephone man. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> yeah. And Jamie, being a right trooper, said, oh, I'll give it a go. And he did, and he got a wonderful applause. He got I a said, round you can of do applause. the exit as well. As you go off, just clap as you get off stage a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. And that yeah. works quite I'm off. I'm off. I'm off. <laughs> it's brilliant. I've done it every um, time. My dear. Yeah, but it, it doesn't work every time because, of course, the magic of comedy is the second you try to repeat something, it doesn't necessarily work. Guys, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. can't really do it with tragedy either. You can't go, alas, poor Yorick. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. Um, Although uh, I think I did try making a comedy moment of Gloucester falling off the uh, cliff a couple of times. No? Yeah, that was good. Yes, you did fall off the cliff. Well, I found that very blind. funny. So it was very hard to get back into the seriousness of it. Yeah. It's a very funny scene. I think it's not played for laughs enough, actually, oh, uh, when okay. he falls off the cliff. That's why you can't. <laughs> <obviously. laughs> yeah, that's it. Now you've worked very successfully with your with your father, with Warren, uh, the Price visiting Mr. Green, um, uh, and uh, terrific productions. But how was that uh, working with with your dad, and how did that come about? Was it something that Warren said to you, "Do you want to come and do this show," or did it just develop organically? Um, visiting Mr. Green. Is yes, we're all about yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, visiting Mr. Green, I, I think. Well, to, yes. Um, to go back to its origins, which is Warren coming to work here, he was. Um, um, I'm sorry, he he wasn't doing enough of the work he wanted to do, and he was a bit jealous mm. that I'd had a couple of decent roles at the ensemble. And he said, "Could you have a word with your director, Sandra Bates? <laughs> he, you know, just have a word. Drop, you know, just you know, I'll come up, you know, I'll, I'll play as cast, whatever." Um, and I said, "Dad, are you serious? Because obviously, you know, I think she would be quite pleased mm. if you wanted to come jump at it, yeah." Uh, and I said to Sandra, is it "Warren's interested in coming working." Well, that was it. Um, she she had the right play for us, and um, uh, yeah, it was great. The, the rest is history. Um, I, I yeah. did. I got really. I got 
I actually got better with, with Warren as an actor to actor than father and son. So it was always a slight bit of frisson right. backstage sometimes if he'd have a go at me on something father to son-ish and then we'd have to get on stage and just drop all that and um, <laughs> yeah. get on the show. But it, it, it usually worked. Yes, that must be strange. But but also you work together a lot, so I guess it worked on on many levels. Well, no, yeah, no, it, it did. It got better. But I, I remember when we did the price with Tony Scanlon and Henry Zepps, and um, mm. there was one moment where Warren kind of commandeered the rehearsal. He said, "No, I think we should do this." And I I turned to him and said, "Warren, you don't like to pull rank, but I said I've got the most lines mm. in this. I'm the lead. Can we just get on with it, please?" <laughs> and he was like, mm, "Okay, okay." He uh, took but, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Uh, um, and D Danny, when I first uh, joined the ensemble in Japes, I um, had the uh, wonderful, um, I got the part, that great part, because I looked a bit like your brother, which was which was a very good, yes, great um, yeah, Sandra, yeah, yeah, Sandra Bates yeah. meeting her in the foyer of the opera house. She said, oh, you're Mark. And the next next day I was yeah. told to come in and, and do, yeah. the, do the play. Uh, um, but you'd see me on stage kind of as well. Have grayed up nicely alongside each other. Yeah, have, haven't they? Yes. And people do often get us mixed up. Sometimes yes, they ask yeah, me about yeah. my famous father and I go, oh, yeah, no, he's great. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he was all right. Now, what was the spark for you with um, with moving to Australia? So you were doing work and drama school and um, acting in the UK. Why, why, why did you come here? Look, it's again it's very simple. It was it was Warren's success um, that uh, 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 brought him out here. Uh, the, the the success of mm -hmm. Till Death Is Do Part, um, and he I think he just got offered a contra deal with Qantas. He said, "Look, family, I've got all these free business class tickets." come out for a holiday and I'd been working for a couple of years in England and I thought it was very extravagant and uh, I didn't know how I could do it and I could only do it if I could work but you need to have, have a you know I, you know you have to be a resident to work as an actor and how do you do that when yep. you have to get offered a job well then it occurred to me I had two very good friends running the drama studio at the time the sister school to the drama centre uh, Tony mm. Knight and Tim Robbins and I I think I actually rang them up which was a tricky thing to do back in the 80s like quick have a quick chat um, I yeah. said can you offer me a job and they said oh actually yeah we can so that helped me get right. the 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 paperwork the numbers um, uh, to apply for a temporary resident visa which got me out yep. here for a bit of a holiday and then I stayed on for a year and a half and for me that was the beginning of uh, the love affair I've had with Australia which uh, which has been a bit perhaps a bit confusing and tricky in my career because I kept going back to England and coming back and going back and coming back and and there's yes. plenty of people have pointed out if you'd stayed in one place you might have gone on a bit more and your, your profile might have been a little bit higher but there we go I, I'd love to be here I have no regrets and um yeah, uh, what's yeah. Your question? you've done was lots of great work. I think that was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was, no, that's right. Why Australia? So you did the, uh, the year and a half and you fell in love with it and then you couldn't yeah. wait to come back. Was it hard to leave the UK? Well, yeah. Uh, um, no, I, I couldn't wait to leave because I've been offered an exciting job in, in Europe with, I think, called Kiss then, very um, um, a poor theatre um, in Holland and mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. working with Dante's Paradiso, all kinds of wonderful stuff. And I uh, had a great year yeah. there. Then I was back, um, not really thinking about it, I was back in England. In 86, I realised my residency visa was up and I had to come back. Um, so I, I was hunting around for work. I managed to uh, uh, um, get a, a commercial and, and do one play. And But I, that 86, I wasn't happy. I came back to England in 88, I come back and I loved it. And oh, It's just to and fro Mark. It was, it was bizarre. Yeah. And I think as many actors, you, you don't really plan what you're doing. You go where the work is. Um, and it did That's mean right. that it was, um, you know, apart from that, when I would get the old man to do a sausage commercial or something to help pay for a ticket to get me out here, well, probably without yeah. that, I wouldn't have been able to come back the number of times I have. Yeah. And then you finally stayed and uh, have been here since. And going back as well, yeah. you've done work back back in the UK but oh, a couple of done lots little of bits and bobs here and there but mo yeah mm. mostly here since the mid 90s yeah and uh, Danny I know that you are working on uh, a play of your own uh, can you tell us anything about that your own uh, uh, show that stars you and you're yes, writing it yes too. yes that's right well thank you for asking yeah this is a this is a play that came out of uh, um the work that I have been doing for 15 odd years, whenever I've not been an actor, I mean, there's lots of things I've done, but but from about oh, five to 15, 16, well, whatever, um, I'm not very good with numbers. Uh, no, earlier than that, oh, 0203. <laughs> I've, I've worked as a carer 
um, disability yeah. home care and aged care. Um, and there was one time, pre-COVID days, um, I, I, I was going in to take a client out and it was Bastille Day and um, they had all the, you know, the French flags and everything up and they were about to serve drinks and croissants or whatever. And I said, I'm meant to be taking Jimmy out, um, but he's at the end of a row here. And they said, no, no, just stay and help us. We're, we're doing this. I said, OK, that's fine. I don't, I, I'm flexible, can do, do whatever. Ten minutes later, we're waiting for a pianist to turn up and I get a nod from one of the girls who worked there, said, Danny, the pianist is running late. Pointed at the piano, said, can you just fill in for a bit? <laughs> oh, and right. I said, I'm not being this. No. She said, Oh, go on, no. you're an actor, you can do anything. Well, of course, that's all you need said, isn't it? I went, Well, that's I've got it. like a 10 minute repertoire, so here we go. A yeah. little bit of jazzy stuff. Got got to my Moonlight Sonata, um, um, finished that. And I, I said, That's it, that's it. She said, Go around again. They won't notice. Go around again. Um, well, when they did or didn't, I couldn't go around again. I <laughs> you can play that. There, I said, you guys know me. I'm Danny. I, I, we go out to lunch. I come here. We go through the papers and we do this. And, and I chatted with them and it was great fun. And when the pianist finally turned yeah. up and I went to leave, I said cheekily, I spoke to the, um, uh, to the girl on the desk. I said, I've just done our first 25 minutes. What's her hourly rate? And she told me this is on 19, <laughs> 90 bucks an hour. And so I went away and I thought, sorry, this is turning into a bit of a long, long story. I went away and I thought that no, is a good. lot more than I'm getting as a carer. Perhaps I can segue yeah. my my acting skills with with my familiarity with, with going into aged care facilities, nursing homes, whatever, and develop a show, which I did. And it was it was a yeah. bit uh, kind of a little bit single, not a couple of songs in there because I knew they, they kind of wanted me to do that. But it was chatting, it was fun, and it was doing a lot of anecdotes, yeah. as, as one you say, uh, you know, in my anecdotage, um, telling stories about the theatre. And it was fun. I did about six or eight shows uh, when I had to go back to England. I think this was when, when my old man was very ill. Um, and it kind of, it, it, I almost picked it up again, but then it dropped again. And it was only uh, a year or two later, so around 2017, 18, I think the likes of yourself and a few other people asked me what was happening with it. And I kept thinking, well, mm. I'd love to do it as a main stage show uh, and take mm. away some of the, 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 well, just put something a bit more meaty in there as well, because it's, um, mm. because it's not yep. just all fun and games on stage. So it's gone from being called acting tales to stage fraught. And hope having said that, yes, no one I like that. Like it stays stage fraught. No, so no, I think I think they're stage, they can't pinch you. The angst of being an actor, all that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, I'm yeah, working great. hard, to, uh, and I hope to be able to do it up here, um, and, and then wherever people yeah. think of the odds somewhere else. Um, and you, so you're preparing that. Um, and what? Any other future plans? It's hard. I know in lockdown, nobody has any future plans at the moment. But eventually when we're all vaccinated and when we're all back out and safe in the community, anything that you've got coming up that you really are itching to do apart from your solo play? Oh, no, in terms of, no, I did, the itchings to do, to go for a swim, to go to Europe, to visit friends, <laughs> To get a dog, yeah. even, you know, I kind of think, which yeah, I, you're right. meant to be able to do in lockdown, but I can't because I still want to do the other things and travel. So, no, look, I'd, I'd, I'd love yeah. to work. I did think coming up here, I was quite prepared for my career to lie dormant for a bit. Uh, uh, um, I love the fact that the enthusiasm of the amateur group here and all over Australia, amateur group is fantastic, the enthusiasm, the passion, and they immediately wanted to get me involved mm. in the work here. And I could go, no, I'm stepping back after 43 years. That just just I'll, I'll support I'll come to do things do things but before I know yeah. I'm going I've got a little show I want to do for you so um beyond that no I can't really <laughs> yeah. see anything else uh, but I'm open to offers Mark anybody you know uh, uh, yes of course uh, well always actually, my, my passion uh, has been reignited I'm ready to go again after a bit of a break good uh, We've we've done some lovely shows together. Um, oh, the Act those. is one of my favourites that I enjoyed. Draw a Boy, Hamlet as well, um, and King yes. Lear, as you aforementioned. Yeah. Uh, we've done some yeah. wonderful, so we will do some wonderful work coming up. Danny, yeah, it's sure. always, always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so oh, much fantastic. for being our guest this morning. It's and, my pleasure, uh, Mark. Please. I don't get to talk to you enough. So, you know, I can no, go on for right. hours talking about all the stuff we've we'll done. We'll continue more. And all that kind of stuff. We will. We'll have lunch. Um, yeah, but also uh, let it, keep us in uh, keep in touch with the with the with the one man show and uh, all the best with it. And we'll speak to you very soon. And yes, hopefully you see you in a foyer one day coming yeah. up soon. Yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. <laughs> love to do that.
Fantastic. By the way, I just want to say congratulations. Did I get to see you after a Woman in Black? It was so beautiful, such a beautiful play. And uh, um, I'm so sorry for everyone involved that um, this shit happened. Well, for everybody, but, um, yeah. but you know, I watched that yeah, show and you. it should have had a time. We'll try. Mark, Hopefully we'll bring it back before story. Christmas. Yeah. You too. Cool. Thanks, Danny. Thank you. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. And thank you for being part of Ensemble Conversations. Keep those emails coming in. Uh, thank you for all your warm wishes and your support and donating those tickets. It means a lot to us here at the Ensemble Theatre. We'll see you next time for another guest uh, on Ensemble Conversations. So for now, bye and keep safe.